Green Jolly Green, this is Sandy Six. Uh, Roger Jolly's, uh, where are you at? I'm actually going to have to make this quick because the uh, uh, 405 is about 1,600 pounds of gas total. I guess uh, the both survivors are pretty bad shape. Uh, Jolly Six, Sandy Six, what's the deal there now? If we could round this out and you tell me that funny story about somebody painting Jolly Green footprints on a silo. On a, on a, on a water tower. Water tower. Well, there, there was another case of the Jolly Green footprints. You know, one of our command, the commander of rescue was a two-star general, General Allison Brooks. And at this time in 1966 or 67, they, had, they were getting their HC-130s. And he flew into Udorn one day, just as a visit, courtesy visit to the to the to the Air Force there, and talk about rescue coverage and all that. And when he landed there at uh, Udorn, he says, "Now he says, I know you men's reputation about great painting green footprints." He says, "But I got this newly painted new aircraft here." He says, "I don't want to see no footprints on that." I said, yes, sir, General. So he was up on base. He went on the other side of the base for two, three hours. And when he gets back, he looks at not a green footprint anywhere on that C-130. So he, uh, he commended them for being <laughs> fine, upstanding gentlemen. So as they taxied out, they closed the ramp, two great big footprints on the bottom of the C-130 ramp. <laughs> And then, because uh, we carried a kit in our in our equipment box in the front of the helicopter, just below the cockpit steps. It was a step into the cockpit, but in that was our equipment box, and we had green footprint stencils, stencils, paint, every, brushes, everything in there, you know. Well, in the summer of seventy, or the, you know, the summer of seventy, there was an ammunition ship in the Gulf of uh, uh, Thailand that got hijacked. So uh, they were going to recover that ammo ship. It was headed, I think, for Tok Lee. Well, anyway, they sent two of our helicopters down there, and they landed them on this Navy. I guess it was one of their helicopter carriers. And it had, they, the, our helicopters were on that carrier for like three days or something like that, you know. Well, the first night they were on the ship, the next morning they get up, there's, fl there's these blue and white Fly Navy stickers the sides of these camouflaged helicopters. <laughs> so, you know, and so uh, PJs, they said, well, that's going to get remedied. And so they, next night, these two PJs, or maybe it was three or four of them, went around that Navy ship. And they were good at eating in and concealment, you know. They put that green paint and they had green stencils, and there was paint, green footprints, you lift it, you lift the toilet lid up, there's green footprints, open a, open a, a, a junction box on an electrical suit, there's green footprints, <laughs> there's green footprints out there on the deck, hey, they went wild, you know, and the captain gets up, the Navy captain gets up the next morning, saw those green footprints, all he could say was touche, <laughs> you know, so, and, and that was kind of a, tradition over there because if another aircraft from a unit, let's say come from uh, uh, Tuiwa, South Vietnam, and it landed at a base in Thailand, that base up there, there was one called, they, they had this spook, and it showed this guy with a conical hat, and, and he's draped here, like he's got his hand over here like this, that was their symbol. And if an aircraft came in there from another base, that aircraft got that stencil on, you know, and so yeah, we uh, they got carried away with them stencils over there. And they, um, yeah, they and they had some they had some hard parties over there. I mean, when we picked up those triple nickel guys in April, man, they partied at the NCO club and the officers club, you know. The, 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 uh, and I had to fly the next day, you know, so I'm up there just getting out of the shower. And Colonel Catlin called. He's our ops officer. And he says, uh, 
Sergeant Nelson, he says, you get down here to the NCO club, they're throwing a party. And I says, uh, but I'm flying tomorrow. He says, you're flying? I says, I says yeah, yes, yeah, sir. And he says, who are you flying with? And I said, you. <laughs> and I was. You know, he, he they had me on a flight going to NKP the next day. And Colonel Catlin was the, uh, he was the pilot. And uh, so he said, well, come down here and make a show and then, then get your crew rest. So I went down there and they had these tables lined up in the NCO club. And, and this one captain, he gets up and grabs his hat. You know, he says, yeah, we need some more, we need some more liquor. And he runs down there and everybody throwing money in there hat, you know, they go to the order bar and buy, you know, and I didn't drink, so I, uh, I just went along with the party for a while, and then I had to excuse myself, because I had to go flying the next day, you know, and so, uh, and, uh, when, I looked over yonder, and what did I see, a big green giant coming after me. He was born one morning in the distant land, reared in a valley so much longer, he was at 50 feet tall and above the trees, a big, big giant called the Jolly Green. He could cover a mile in a single stride, towering high in all of his pride, he came swiftly through the jungle of steam to answer the call for the Jolly Green. He would answer a call during the day or night, never fearing the enemy's might. Through shell and fire, he'd wade right through to complete the task he was asked to do. 